Can anybody confess to me that you've been inspired? You have a great idea about how you want to be in life, but you're struggling trying to be that, and it seems to be making life worse for you. Can anybody confess up? Come on. <laughs> Who's in that situation? Thank you. One honest person, another. Many honest people. Thank you. You see the ideals, the beautiful ideals of faith have been put in us with no practicum, no practical means. This is the practical means from our Guru Krishnamacharya. And I want you to have it, and I want you to forget about the goal and just do your sadhana. Because if you don't do sadhana, the goal makes your life worse. It implies that you're not there yet. And that's the problem. You are there. How could you not be there? You are reality itself. You are life itself. There is no getting there when you're already there. My other great guru, U.G. Krishnamurti, said the problem is in the looking because it implies the absence. Looking, looking, searching, meditating, trying to realize something is the problem. Because it, if you're looking for something, it means that you don't presently have it. Right? That's the problem. Has anyone had the experience of thinking that you've lost your glasses and you spend half an hour looking for your glasses? <laughs> and then you suddenly, oh shit, they're on the top of my head. Has anyone had that experience? <laughs> yeah, thanks. And it's very relieving, isn't it? And I'm telling you, in the spiritual circus, you're all put on the merry-go-round of looking, looking, trying to get to God as if God is absent. And the looking is the problem. How can God be absent from this extraordinary situation where we find ourselves, this extreme intelligence and beauty that is you and me, and function, right? How can God be absent from a leaf? You know? Or the sun and the moon, or any creature, or you and me. This extreme, beyond scientific understanding of the arising of any condition whatsoever, right? There is no absence of source reality. There is none. But the looking has been put in us, trying to meditate, you know, trying to do all this Western gymnastics that they call yoga. <laughs> yeah? Trying to get somewhere, right? You're in, you know, you're, some of you are honest. You're trying to do that, aren't you? Looking for God is an insult to God, don't you think? God is arising here. So, stop as my guru, U.G. Krishnamurti. Stop looking, start living. That's what he said. So now yoga arises as your direct participation in the given reality, in life itself. And that is the practice that I want you to have. It's called Hatha Yoga. If you're doing asana, it's Hatha Yoga. Hatha, which comes from the great tradition. Hatha Yoga is the non-dual tantra of direct intimacy with reality itself. Where you don't need a search, you don't need a goal, you just are participating in what is already given. Hatha Yoga, this work of Krishnamacharya, belongs in that tradition and it must get in there. Learn this as the practicum, the practical means to realize the great promises of the great tradition. It has to be there. If it's not there, then the great tradition becomes like cocaine. You know, you get a buzz from it, but it makes life worse because it seems to create an on and off switch. Sometimes you're there, sometimes you're not there. And when you're not there, you're miserable. And then you get a little sniff of it again. There has to be an ongoing, real deal yoga practice that you do for yourself. Get intimate with your natural condition. Now, be intimate with your own embodiment 
your own breath, the exhale with the inhale, this, this matter of hatha yoga, be intimate there. Then what happens is that it brings the mind to the heart where the consciousness resides. The consciousness is blooming from the hridaya, the first cell of life that came into being when you're, see, hatha, the, your male-female polarity that produced your mother and father, right? that produced you in that spark of life. You came in, boom, see, there you were. And when you do hatha yoga, this intimacy with your own condition brings the mind to the hridaya, from it to its source, actually. They say the mind arises from the heart. Literally, you know, technically. Biologically, the mind arises from the heart. And it puts the mind back into the heart, you know, back into source reality. 